Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes believers are bogged down by the cares of life. Now, so, as a person of faith, we ought to have hope. And sometimes we miss the, the essence of the future. We have a bright future. And if anyone tells you you don't have a bright future, I'm here to tell you, yes, you do. Amen. You have a bright future. Right. You have a future of hope. Mm -hmm. You have a bright future. Every one of you. And then sometimes people rob themselves of the very fuel they need to get inspired and to do great things for God. They rob themselves of the fuel. In other words, they take their toys from worship and go. Or they stay away from Bible study because there's a challenge there. Or when somebody talks about the stewardship of the church, they get offended. And so they decide that they'll keep their pocket put in their pocket. Sometimes the thing is, is that we forget that God is a God of hope. I want to share an example this morning about a little girl who's sitting on Santa's lap. And she gives them this, his, this whole list of expensive toys and the things that she wants for Christmas. And then without a word of appreciation, she jumps off Santa's lap and starts toward her mother. And her concerned mother spoke quickly and said, Honey, haven't you forgotten something? The little girl thought for a moment, and then she turned around, Oh yeah, to Santa. She turned back to Santa and said, Charge it! <laughs> Sometimes, we teach our children the wrong things. <laughs> but when we say charge it, I think of our sins are charged to someone else's account. That account is Jesus. The problem is that we don't celebrate the 12 days of Christmas anymore. We celebrate the 25 days of Christmas shopping. <laughs> and then crash and burn, never really hearing the good news of hope. We may be bombarded by the godless fantasies of Christmas to the exclusion of the reality that God is with us. God is with us. I believe that hope means taking God's word as a medicine for our soul. To taking God's word as hope is the anticipation of a favorable outcome under God's guidance, of course. Hope is the confidence that what God has done for us in the past guarantees our participation in what God will do for us in the future. Amen. God gives us this blessed hope of the promise of Christ. Advent is marked by this spirit, this spirit of expectation, this spirit of anticipation, this spirit of preparation, and of longing for a better life, a better way. There's this yearning for deliverance from the evils of the world, first experienced by the Israelite slaves. as they cried out from their bitter oppression. You see, it is the cry of those who have experienced the tyranny of injustice in a world under the curse of sin. And yet, who have hope, the hope of deliverance by a God who hears the cries of the oppressed slave and brought this deliverance. It is this hope however faint at times, and that God, however distant God may seem to you at times, 
that brings to the world the anticipation of a king who will rule in truth, Amen. with justice, with righteousness. It is that hope, that once anticipated reign of the anointed one, the Messiah, the Prince of Peace, will ignite the candle of hope within each one of us, knowing that God will keep us forever. Amen. God will keep you forever. My friends, as people of faith this morning, we have reason for joy. That's right. As people of faith, we have reason for life. As people of faith, we have reason for perseverance. As people of faith, we have reason for hope, even in our struggles. Sometimes people don't understand. And I've actually had people get upset when I actually talk about hope. Some may say that I'm offering false hope, but I don't believe there's any such thing. Others say I'm not offering a person the power of faith. And they say hope implies doubt and doubt sabotages success. But I, for one, continue to value hope. I value hope because when we can't summon certainty, we can summon hope. Hope is better than despair. Hope says things will get better. Hope reminds us that there are new adventures waiting to be found Amen. and new successes to enjoy. I am encouraged and I am blessed by the message of hope. And it is my prayer that this Advent season, this season of preparation, that we will be prepared for the blessings of God. That we will use hope as we prepare our hearts for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So I say to you this morning, I pray that you will embrace and give thanks for the power of hope. Think on these things this morning.